Hello, fellow detectives. Welcome to Unlocked, the official podcast for all things Nancy Drew by Her Interactive. I'm your host, Tammy Tucky, and this week we welcome producer Melissa Heydrich to the show. Welcome, Melissa. So how did you hear about the company, Her Interactive, before starting to work with them? Um, I actually was working at Humongous Entertainment before that, and the wife of someone who worked at Her Interactive was on my team, so she introduced me. What what games did you get to work with for Humongous? Because I remember playing Putt-Putt all the time. (laughs) Uh, I wasn't there for the the old adventure games. Those were so fun. Um, I did backyard sports. Um, I was kind of at the tail end of the company right before it shut down. Um, So I did a bunch of... um, like hockey DS games. I remember those too, though. So they were a lot of fun. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, it was fun. It was was really good working there. When you got to go to Her Interactive yourself to see, you know, what type of projects they were working on. See, this is really interesting because I love resorting to danger and lights, camera, curses. And these were the games you got to work on. And I really liked the setup for these because I played the original games since they first came out you know, in 98. So I was used to that setup, but there was a new setup they brought in for these two games. So were you behind that creative aspect and changing it up a little bit? Right. They were looking for something a little more casual to hit that new market that had been kind of emerging over the last few years. So yeah, I didn't work on the adventure games at all. When I was in, they were midway through um, designing a brand new casual series. And they kind of wanted it to make, they kind of wanted to do like a step up from what was currently out on the marketplace, kind of almost a hybrid between casual and adventure with, you know, fancier elements um, at the time at least. So yeah, I think I was kind of, I kind of came on at the very end of the um, design phase and we had, you know, many, many redesigns until we finally came up with something that worked um, in terms of um, game mechanic. Um, But yeah, Lights, Camera, Curses was first, then Resorting to Danger. and um, yeah, and we, we were trying to put out that third casual game, and um, it was so sad that um, it just didn't happen. Well, let's start out with Lights, Camera, Curses, because that's the first one, and you actually have a voice role in this one as Lydia Lynn. So how did that ah. come about, you know, adding that to your, to your resume, in, including being a producer of the game? Oh my gosh, I don't even remember. Um, I think we were just, you know... I think maybe I did like a temporary voiceover for her and then it wasn't so bad. So we just said, ah, we'll just keep this in. It's like, it's, you know, we put some effect on it to make it sound like I was on the phone, I think. So (laughs) kind of covered up anything unprofessional about my voice. I don't know. Um, Yeah, it was, you know, just like 10 second roll. So it wasn't a big deal to just leave me in. You can get a different ending for each game, correct? Because you have so many characters, it can be either or for that game. Right. We had, I think, six different endings based on which character ended up being the villain. So, you know, 99% of the game was the same, but then um, depending on a couple of choices you made, um, you would have a different villain at the end, pretty much. Um, I thought that I was remember- a great idea, though, because it, it I really didn't understand that until I played it a second time around, and I went, this is not the original villain I, I got in the first time I yeah. played it. <laughs> no, I can't remember if we advertised that or, very well or not, um, but yeah, that's that was kind of fun. I know we got some, um, a little bit of backlash on some of those characters. Um, Why do you think that was? Um, looking back, I think we all decided that there weren't any really nice, strong role models in that game, besides maybe Nancy. All the characters were not very likable. And um, I think there are a couple miscommun- or misinterpretations, too. I know people saw, I know there's a lot of backlash about there was a, like an animal lab. And it was supposed to be a scientist, you know, trying to help animals and help, you know, it was kind of, um, I don't remember exactly what it was, but people thought it was like a research lab where they're doing tests on animals. So, um, you know. I I found them all cartoonish and I thought that was fun because it gave you like 
a different flavor to these types of games because if you were going to keep the same type of aspect with the classic games, then I guess people would complain anyways and say, oh, they're the same. You know what I mean? So I actually thought it was a breath of fresh air when I played it. I really liked all of the characters. I thought how they were. Yeah, I, I agree. Yes, a lot of them were self-absorbed, but, you know, yeah. aren't we all <laughs> in some aspect? Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's good to have some a little bit of change every once in a while anyway, I guess. You know, I thought the aspect and the setup of the games were so much fun. So when you said that you guys were working on a third one, I was like, ooh, so what was the setup for that one? Did, can you tell? or? Oh, my gosh, that was going to be so exciting. Um, it was just going to be really different. You know, I, I wasn't trying to be too hard or anything on our characters. You know, you can't please everyone. And it was, it was definitely a fun game with some fun, you know, uh, mini games in there and everything. I'm not sure what I can say about the third game. I mean, I think people knew what it was about. There's a trailer at the end of the second game, so you saw what it was about. You know, it was, it was SOS. It was there was going to be a big mystery at the beginning about how someone escaped from a room somehow. And I mean, I yeah, I'm not really sure if I'm what I'm allowed to say, but it's been so long. You know, gotta wonder if anyone even cares anymore. But um, it was it was a sad circumstance, though. Um, I think um, what killed the game was the the casual game market suddenly switched from under our feet. Um, the pricing was $19.99 traditionally, and suddenly it turned into a $6.99 world. So they're just we couldn't produce such a high-quality game um, and sell it for less than half the price that it was going for originally. So it was just, you know, there was no choice but to, to cut the team at that point. I feel like the market was like all over the place because you have the Wii games, you have the DS games, you have all these new advancements in technology that are pulling away from that computer game aspect. Although many of us still like it, you know what I mean? But um, there's like this whole new market and now it's those tablets. So it's like, how can you cater to that? So again, of course, it's not your fault. It's it's that rise and fall of the market and what is wanted and needed and that type of thing. But yeah, we were going to, uh, there's some beautiful art and some really cool characters. So I'm still sad about that. I hope someday they release something. I don't know. They can give some more previews of what we had in that game. And then going back to Resorting to Danger, which was another interesting game. I like the spa aspect of this one because I love spas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, nice. Yeah. I mean, I remember we had a few different options for what we wanted the storyline to be. And our marketing team picked the spa. They thought that was just a fresh, you know, new thing that has never been done in the Nancy Nancy Drew World at her interactive. And um, yeah, they just thought it'd be kind of fun, different, you know? When you're actually casting as a producer, when you're looking for voiceover actors or actresses to fill in for your character roles, you know, what do you look for specifically? Do you try to not look at what the person visually looks like and just listen to the sound of their voice or what character voice they're trying to go for? That is funny we usually have um character comps up when we have the the actors there and it is funny sometimes the discrepancy between what they look like and what their voice sounds like it's it's amazing sometimes what these people can do especially the ones who can do multiple characters in a game and you can't even tell that they're the same person i mean it's it's usually pretty obvious when we get someone of that caliber that just pops you know we do an audition and when they read the lines it's just like oh my gosh this person has it they have that that sparkle that a normal human can't produce when they're, you know, you can't just sit there and read lines and just talk. You don't have that. I don't know what it is, that energy. Um, and yeah, so I just, you know, most of them, most of the casting was pretty clear if, if I'm remembering right. It, you know, once we found that person, it just kind of, we just fit with the, the character model we had up and everyone would pretty much should be like, wow, that just sounds exactly how we pictured, you know, this crazy character. Awesome. Did you have a favorite character out of the two games, or? Oh my gosh, um, I, I just remember thinking it was just a very kooky bunch. I mean, we had different aspects of each character that we thought were hilarious. I think everyone's favorite though was honestly Mr. Mingles, um, <laughs> the dog. Just that we just had so much fun with that dog. Um, we even had a stuffed animal that looked just like him. And the people that did the voices just made the characters so much funnier though. 
the, those, each one of those characters was just ridiculous. I can't remember their names anymore. The one that starts off in the spa with the cucumbers over her eyes and the super, I guess she's the owner of Mr. Mingles. You guys had a lot of different puzzles with this aspect, not the typical classic Nancy Drew puzzles, which I also thought was a lot of fun too. It's true. The puzzles you're talking about were really interesting for us. It was a huge challenge because we were kind of a hybrid between a casual game and an adventure game. And the puzzles are much easier than some of the adventure ones, but the casual market had a lot of complaints about our puzzle. You know, the, vo- the vocal people complain more probably, but I know our puzzles, um, you know, they weren't completely mindless. They had, you know, you had to put some thought onto them for sure. So it was really interesting striking. We did so much focus testing and just trying to strike that balance between, you know, just the right level of difficulty to accommodate everyone. So what are you working on currently? Are you still a game producer? Oh, no, that's why I feel like it's it's just a different life. I have two kids. Um, I am just at home with them, and it is insane. I I don't even know how to. (laughs) But, I mean, I'm comparing this to, you know, we had crazy times back in the office at HI. We'd stay till 3 a.m. at the office sometimes, you know, trying to get stuff out. And, you know, it was stressful. I remember being really sleep-deprived, but it does not compare to having two young kids, i got to say, especially emotionally. These kids are just... um, definitely the hardest thing I've ever ever done. How old are they now? Are they old enough to play any of the humongous games or Nancy Drew games? Oh, that would be fun. Um, Yeah, we'll probably start them off with some humongous games. I'm kind of avoiding video games for now. Um, But they're three and six. We have some stuffies from the humongous days that they like to play with. I grab a pajama fan and and now I feel really old. yeah. <laughs> you are not alone in that aspect at all. But I know your your kids are going to love the Nancy Drew games you put together. Once they get a little bit older, I feel like they're going to just get a kick out of it for sure. That will be funny to see them, what they think of them. <laughs> has my husband's music in them too. So he's a composer and he worked with us. Um, that's why I play a couple of different instruments in um, the Dossier series. I've let the kids listen to some of the stuff in the car some of the stuff he composes, and they're like, that's Daddy's song! They're so excited. So some people will have to show them the games and tell them all the music is. Well, I can't thank you enough for being on the show. This has been so much fun, Melissa. And my last question for you is if you could describe your experience working with Her Interactive and being a part of the Nancy Drew universe using one word, what would that be? Oh, my gosh. Um... Um, I guess, no pun intended, but total adventure, crazy times, fun times, um, um, ups and downs for sure, educational and just an adventure. 